for the graph when you're given a graph. All right, question four. That was a long time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be on my A game now, uh, speaking pretty fast. So. This is biology, so your definition of a catalyst here does not have to be that technical. I mean, it's only one marks. For your chemistry, it might have to be a bit more, bit more um, advanced. But the thing that you need to know is that catalysts are substances that speed up chemical reactions, right, without being used in the process. One thing to know. Um, sometimes in the mark scheme, you only need this, but always say without being used in the process. You never know. It's this is the definition, the true definition of a catalyst, right? Um, you can also say speed up reactions if you like. Um, if you don't want to say chemical reactions, people often get scared of saying chemical reactions because it's a biology paper. I think they're going off topic. So you can just say speed up reactions without being used up in the process. It doesn't matter. But this last part, without being used up in the process. It's really crucial, and I think at GCSE, even at GCSE, you do, you do need to write this. Even though it might not appear in the mark scheme, it uh, shows that you have an understanding of what a catalyst actually is. So, what is it meant by the term metabolic? This is quite a hard question. And um, the way you answer it is, you have to talk about chemical reactions. That, that occur in the body, right? The, it's the chemical reactions that occur in the body and you can relate this to different things such as um, that occur in the cytoplasm uh, you can say there are processes in cells uh, there are many ways you can explain it right but in terms of it I wouldn't really recommend going too technical with it since it's only one mark they're only going to ask for something pretty simple and it's always going to relate to chemical reactions occurring in the body now next up we have a graph question now, for this graph question, something uh, I can't actually draw too well on the graph, and I don't want to give you guys a plot that um, isn't that beneficial to you, but this is five marks. So I am going to put a picture on the screen of the mark scheme for the graph so you can see how to respond to it. Um, for your graphs, there's often a very like concise mark scheme that involves a linear scale, half of grid. Uh, lines neatly drawn between points, your axes are correct way around, points correctly labeled, and your axes have to be numbered um, with an appropriate scale, right? Graphs are easy, and they're five marks. Just don't mess it up. That's all I can give you for advice. If you'd like to practice graphs, once again, I'm linking the paper in the description, but I can't draw the graph in uh, on my computer in a way that I'd be comfortable with showing you guys because I only want to show you the best way to answer it and if I mess up my graph, I feel like it's a bit unfair to you guys. So I'm going to just answer this question by looking at the table. Explain the effects of increasing enzyme concentration on the rate of oxygen production. So this is an explain question, so we don't actually have to look at the graph. So let's have a look at this here. What is actually happening? Well, we can see that as enzyme concentration is increasing, we can see this is also going in the same direction. They are both. So, what is the effect of increasing enzyme concentration in the rate of oxygen production? So, as enzyme concentration increases, so does oxygen production. Now, if you guys didn't spot it here, you might have noticed something. These two are equal, right? 8.2, 8.2. So, a really nice way to get marks, which is shows that you understand the data you have, is say, up until 8, right? That shows that you, you can see that it peaks up until 8, where it peaks at, let's have a look, 8.2. Uh, and we can say just so it makes more sense, we get eight disks, because that's what it's talking about. All right. But this is an explain question, so we can't just describe it, we have to explain it. So why? So why does it explain it? So more enzyme are available to react with the substrates. Allowing more enzyme substrate, enzyme substrate complexes 
to be formed. This means that there will be more uh, more reactions occur, right? So you can talk about enzymes from substrates. You can talk about enzyme substrate complexes. You can talk about more collisions, more reactions. Um, many ways you can go through it, right? And the reason, right? The effect. Uh, effect of increasing. You have to talk about the peak, right? So you can say up until all of the substrate molecules have combined with enzymes. Because if you think about it, once uh, once you react, once you combine all the substrate with enzymes, there won't be any effect of increasing enzyme concentration, right? So yeah, it's pretty simple and I think it's pretty nice. Next, uh, name a piece of apparatus that can suitable for measuring the volume of gas produced. When you're talking about gas, there's only one piece of apparatus you need to know. Bam, gas range. You can also state inverted measuring cylinder. I don't really like that one though. I explain why it's important for the teacher to keep the volume and concentration of hydrogen peroxide constant. Well, it is important to change only one variable as changing the volume or concentration of hydrogen peroxide may also affect the dependent variable rate, right? When you have an experiment, you only want to change um, the independent variable, one independent variable. If you change more than one, you don't know which one's affecting the experiment. So yeah. Next up, we have, name another variable t-shirts you can Teacher should keep constant in the question. Well, we know we're dealing with enzymes, so what affects enzyme activity? Temperature and pH. Yep, simple as that. Temp, pH. Um, another thing we can say is type of potato. Because uh, we know our reaction is actually on potato disks, right? Enzyme react concentration in potato disks, right? Well, Type of potato, they might have different types of enzymes, different concentration of enzymes. So yeah. All right. Um, for the previous question, I couldn't actually go that in depth because of the graph. Um, so yeah, this is one of the times where I recommend you to look at the link in the mark, uh, link description, where you can check uh, for anything you're unclear with. You can check the mark scheme yourself. I think it'll really help you. All right. Next up, farmers can increase their crop yield by growing crops in a temperature-controlled glass house. Explain how increasing the temperature can result in an increase in crop yield. Well, let's have a look. Why does yield increase in the first place? Why are the crops growing? I mean, they need energy to grow. Growth requires energy. And how does the plant obtain its energy? Photosynthesis. So, we can say, as, uh, as the temperature increases, so does rate of photosynthesis. Right? Then we can talk about photosynthesis. So why does a higher temperature increase it? Well, one thing to note about these reactions such as photosynthesis is that a lot of them are enzyme controlled. So we go back to this question. We already know about enzymes if we are able to answer this question. So we can answer this question very easily. The molecules in the reaction have higher Ke kinetic energy, thus more collisions occur. The temperature may be closer to the optimum temperature for enzyme for the enzyme responsible. So, more enzyme substrate complexes are formed, and more um, glucose is produced. This is a uh, print overboard for two marks, but it's a nice question. So, when you get questions like these, it's, it always feels good to write a bit more. Uh, this will get you definitely the two marks. 
and yeah, just remember the photosynthesis has a uh, relation to enzymes, an enzyme control reaction. So when you talk about increase in temperature, you can talk about how the enzymes are affected. Right. All right. Farmers sometimes use a heater that burns gas or oil to raise the temperature of their glass house to improve crop yield. Explain what this type of heater, uh, why they use this type of heater to improve crop yield. Let's see. It burns gas or oil, right? What do we know is produced when we burn stuff like that? S carbon dioxide, CO2. CO2, carbon dioxide, is released into the air. We know that CO2 is responsible as a reactant for photosynthesis. So we can say that CO2 is a reactant for photosynthesis. Right? So we can say that in using the sample heater will provide more reactants allowing for more photosynthesis. But this will get you the marks easily, more than the marks. But and one thing to note, just for your understanding, is that this will only uh, allow for more photosynthesis if carbon dioxide is a limiting factor. If there's another limiting factor, such as light intensity or something like that, rate of photosynthesis won't increase even if you give it all the carbon dioxide in the world. In the world. There we go. All right, B. Some farmers add chemical fertilizers to their crops in a glass house. Different minerals are added to the chemical fertilizers. Explain one mineral that should be added to these fertilizers. Love. Okay. Easy question, and I'm going to be concise with it because I'm sure you guys know how to answer this. There are two, uh, only two mineral ions that you really learn for in IGCSE, and these are nitrates and magnesium. Now. For nitrate ion, we know that is used for used for amino acid or you can say used for protein. Both are technically true. It's just um, just a kind of a technicality, but it doesn't matter. You'll get the marks regardless of what you say, as long as you mention um, amino acids or protein. Now next up we have magnesium. What is magnesium used for? Used for a very, very distinct green pigment in the plant. Can you guess it? It's used for chlorophyll. Right? Used for building of chlorophyll. And also, even though this is less true than the other one, you can also say, uh, you can say chlorophyll for chloroplasts. This is actually, uh, I didn't mean it's less true. I meant that it's like um, less necessary, right? You don't need to state um, chloroplast actually that often. Uh, chlorophyll is its main role, but chlorophyll exists in the chloroplast, so you can just say that it's responsible for the building of chlorophyll for chloroplasts. All right, five marks. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Discuss why some farmers limit the amount of chemical fertilizers they add to their crops. Wow, quite a nice question here. Uh, causes you to really think for many things. So let's think about it. Adding chemical fertilizers, how do they add it to the crops? Well, they don't feed it to the crops by the mouth. They put it in the soil, right? And when you put chemicals in the soil, what happens? Right? It increases the solute concentration of the soil. It increases the decreases the water potential, right? What does this do? When you decrease the water potential of the soil, there's going to be less of a concentration gradient between the roots and the soil. And what does this lead to? reduced water uptake by osmosis. So how do we write that? So, fertilizers decrease the water potential of the soil, right? So, this prevents, this reduces water uptake via osmosis. Because we know osmosis goes from a, high, from a low water potential a high to low water potential, right? It goes down the gradient. It's a passive process that happens through a semi-permeable mem membrane. And water moves from the soil to roots because it moves from a higher water potential to a lower water potential, right? The water potential in the roots is very low. But if we decrease the water potential in the soil, this process is gonna happen much slower because this, uh, 
rate of osmosis is dependent on the concentration gradient, and we're reducing the gradient between the soil and the root, right? So we all well done. This is bad for the plant, less water. But we haven't said why it's bad for the plant, right? Why is this bad for the plant? Less water means the plant may wilt, right? Water loss leads to wilting of the plant. It's just how it exists. Now, we've gone through this thought tree, dried it down. Three points, right? This, that is in five. So, <coughs> that is in five points, and we need five. So, what else do we know about chemical fertilizers? Well, there's a massive, massive unit that you do. Not massive, but it's uh, pretty big, and I'm sure you all you remember it. Eutrophication, right? It's a big word. People often get scared of it, but it's really, really simple to answer. And it's caused by chemical fertilizers. So how? So when you put chemical fertilizers in the soil, right, they may leach, right? Now, this word may seem confusing, but leaching means like it rolls. It essentially means it is carried on top of the soil into rivers, right? That's what it refers to, but this is a technical term. They may leach into rivers or water or lakes, right? Liv rivers, water, lakes, whatever you want to say, right? Then you want to use the keyword that you, I'm sure everyone remembers because it's a big word and you can't remember it. Uh, you can't forget it. Eutrophication, right? They may, ca they may cause eutrophication, right? Now, another thing, technical term, is you talk about algal bloom, right? Algal bloom refers to the production of lots of algae and um, green plants on the top of the water because what in eutrophication, right? You add a lot of uh, mineral ions into the water. It really boost the growth by a massive, massive amount of the algae at the top of the water. And this covers the whole water in a green murky layer, right? So you can say an algal bloom occurs, which blocks light from the bottom of the water or body of water, whatever you want to say, right? So this causes no photosynthesis for the bottom of the lake, bottom of the water plants, as the light is covered. Right? You can't photosynthesize if you don't have light, sunlight. And it's covered because the whole top layer of the plant, the, the body of water, is covered by algae. Right? So this causes death of uh, underwater organisms. Plants. I'm referring to plants in this um, in this part, but it can more death. So, if you want to go more into this, you can talk about how when these plants die, uh, when these plants die, they're decomposed, and this decompose the decomposers use aerobic respiration, which takes up all the water uh, oxygen from the water, which means that other organisms such as fish also die due to the lack of oxygen in the water. Right now. This is enough to get you five marks and more, but I'm, I feel obliged to tell you that there are other things you can say. Um, another reason that it gives you the marks team, which I think is kind of funny, but um, is that if you limit the amount of chemical fertilizers, you can sell your products as organic, which you can earn more money with. Um, I think that's pretty funny because it has nothing to do with biology, but. Well, you know what? Well, we we can uh, we can. Uh, I don't recommend you use that answer though, because it it's not really a good answer. And it doesn't seem to paint you as a strong strong response. But another thing you can say is that they may prefer to use natural fertilizers, just manure, or that that there's another factor preventing the growth of the crops, such as um, sunlight or something like that. Them adding more fertilizer won't affect it because it's an excess. All right. The human liver produces bile. Explain the role of bile in digestion. Now, this should be right in your head at all times. I mean, knowing the function of bile has appeared so many times in so many papers, and it's just really, really easy to remember. So the way to remember it is that there are four marks, and there's two points, and you have to explain each point, giving you a total of two times two. Right, four. So the first point is that its role is to neutralize hydrochloric Or stomach acid, so hydrochloric acid, stomach acid. Um, the acid is hydrochloric acid, but stomach acid definitely gets you the mark, right? So you neutralize the hydrochloric stomach acid in order 
for the enzymes to not be denatured due to the low pH, right? Or we can say enzymes so that they function closer to optimum, right? You want to talk about how neutralizing the acid is beneficial to the enzymes in the intestine, right? Because these intestinal um, enzymes, they have different optimum pHs than the ones in the stomach. In the stomach, they have very low optimum pHs because it's an acidic environment, right? So when you have things like proteases, like uh, pepsin, right? They have very low um, pHs. But then you go into the intestine, right? and you're getting all these other enzymes acting, they have very high optimum pHs compared to the uh, stomach ones. Why? Because the enzyme is quite an alkaline environment compared to the stomach. It's not acidic, right? So we need to neutralize the stomach acid so it doesn't denature the enzymes in the intestine. And how do we do that? Bile. But this is in only two marks. We need to get the other one. So another use is use this keywords very, very, very uh, strategically. You say this exactly word for word. Emulsify lipids. Simple as that. That's their job. Emulsify lipids. What this means is that it breaks them down into small droplets to increase their surface area. Right? Simple as that. Look how short this response is, right? And look how much they give you to write. This bile question is so free, and you find it so often. I've seen it so many times, and I even got a question like this in my GCSE test. So, yeah, it's really important that you know the function of bile. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I said at the beginning of part one, I would not be going through the entire paper to give you guys a chance to attempt some of the questions on your own based on the advice I gave you with the rest of the paper. Of course, I'm going to be uploading more papers very shortly. Um, it's quite a lot of effort, so if you enjoyed, please um, like the video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below of any uh, later questions in the paper or anything you need me to clarify, and I'll answer as soon as I possibly can. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching this video.